Cam Young, I really wanted to believe in you. Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course DFS. If you don't know already, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. All right, so round three has been suspended. We have some big thunderstorms that are rolling through. Uh, there may be a situation like this morning where they have to push some of the afternoon players to tomorrow morning. Nonetheless, tomorrow's gonna be a much better day and I think you're gonna have a softer course and I think you will have that morning weather edge. So how did my day go? I uh, had a pretty good day. The round's not over yet because it's a suspension, but uh, I had Grio, I had Poston, I had Colton, I had Kevin Yu in a lot of my lineups. So we'll see once they finally finish this round how that works out. So, why my channel? I try to get you in and out in under 10 minutes. We can watch the other channels. There's nothing wrong with them, but I want to get you in and out so you can make those decisions and move on with your life. Also, we got an update on Cameron Champ. As a lot of you all know, he withdrew after lock, which was very painful. Turns out that his wife had their first kid, so congratulations to Cameron Champ, but it really hurt my lineup. All right, so the cut line is going to be four under par. Uh, so I know this is a showdown video, but a lot of us play in the full slate classic. So uh, people like Cam Young just ruined a lot of lineups. Uh, he was the highest priced player. A lot of people had confidence in him and he just let everyone down. You also have Sun JM, JT. I don't think a lot of people expected JT to do well, but his ownership was much higher than I was expecting considering how well he's been playing, how well he hasn't been playing recently. And then you have Sepp Straka, who has been playing really well recently, but he just didn't have it this week. And then the Gala also isn't going to make the cut. I put all of those players in the bucket of fatigue. I know a lot of people think these professional golfers, but a lot of these players have played in a lot of tournaments in the past four to six weeks. And I think it just really caught up to them. All right, let's get into some stats. So for your round three lineup, once again, it's not round four where you have to think about the position. You can just go straight stats and strategy. So I think what I want to do for round three is focus on those players who have been playing well off the tee that are close to the cut line because they're probably going to have lower ownership. People like Trevor Cohn, golfers like Colin Tarum. And also, if he makes the cut because the round's not over, we should really target Adam Hadwin. The next thing we want to look at are people that have been doing well on approach those second and third shots. Uh, we should target people, golfers like Russell Knox. We should also target Ben Taylor and also Trey Mullinex. So these are all players that are close to the cut line. So they probably will be people that might have lower ownership than they should based on how well they're playing in a particular area of their game. Now for putting, we should definitely target a uh, Dylan Wu, we should also target uh, Garrick Higo, and we should also target Bo Hostler. So those are three players from each of those areas of the golf game that I think will probably have low ownership. Now I'm not just telling you to just jam them into all of your lineups, but once again, when we have a tie and we're looking at ratios, because we're also thinking about, you know, weather, we're thinking about weather edge, and we're thinking about the next thing we're gonna talk about who does well traditionally round three. But I just think these three players in all those categories are people that might go under the radar. And that's the whole purpose of DFS. You're trying to get those players at a lower ownership. So when they go off, you reap the benefits more than others. The final thing we want to look at are who are the round three killers? Who are those people that now that they made the cut, they just do a jig. They relax. They know they're going to get some kind of money um, once the tournament is over. And some of those people, and I just made this lineup and actually was able to fit all of these people into the lineup. But you have Quest. He had a much better day today than he had uh, on Thursday. You have Hoagie. I've been high on him the whole tournament, and I will continue to do that. You have Kevin Yu, another person I've really uh, – been um, really been leaning towards this tournament. Now I'm going to go a different direction and say Laird. I'm normally not a Laird person, but I just think because of how well he does round three, now he's playing in the tournament. He's someone that you should probably target. And then you have uh, Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, he's back. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. But definitely, he's uh, he's playing well these first two these first two rounds, and he's someone that you should definitely target uh, for round three. 
And also, Finau, he kind of scared us a little bit. You know, he started off round one really well, then he ended round one uh, not so well. He started round two, and for a second there, we didn't think he was going to make the cut, but the round's not over, but it looks like Finau's going to make the cut. So with this lineup right here, you can see that there's so much value because so many good players didn't make the cut that you have so much flexibility uh, when it comes to your round three lineup that you wouldn't normally have. So that's all I have. I want you to win that guap and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for watching my latest video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.